Okay, next chapter. Chapter 41. Of the book, God dictated to me, he titled, Isaiah 53 and the Day of the Lord. Just as he dictated the Torah to Moses, as believe, he did, but uh, as believed by the Orthodox Judaism. What they don't know is, he dictated every book in the Bible. The entirety of the book is his entirety, not just the Torah from him, but all of it. And that can be verified. Hey, I've already done it in previous videos. You need to either read the book or watch all the videos. All the videos come from that book. And there's a few from the second book he dictated to me, The Life of God's Righteous Servant. And that would be me, Moshe. That's what the talent said for the most part. That's what the sages believe. That the, <clears throat> the anointed one of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1, Moshe, is described in Isaiah 53. They knew you had to have a description. There's two covenants to be delivered. I don't know why any rabbi would think. And I know one in particular that does, Toby a singer, who thinks Joshua was the prophet like Moses. You're looking for the man God dictates a book to. That's what's unique about Moses. And Moses couldn't possibly have known that information any more than the prophets could have known the information of their books that God told them to write. By his dictation, command, and direction. Moses, uh, this is Moses and the angel, chapter 42. Moses tells the Israelites that God is here in order to test you. And in order that the fear of him may ever be with you. God had Moses set a rule before the Israelites regarding the angel he sent to guard them on the way. And to bring them to the place that he had made ready. The promised land. This is Exodus chapter 23 verses 20 through 22. I am sending an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have made ready. Pay heed to him and obey him. Do not defy him for he will not pardon your offense since my name, God, Hashem, is in him. You can also find that in Ezekiel, that God is in his spirit. So when the spirit lit upon me, pursuant to chapter 11, the spirit of God lit upon the twig of the stump, of the shoot of the stump of Jesse, could just as well read the spirit of God and God lit upon the twig of the shoot of the stump of Jesse. You instantly become a man of divine being, and you can hear God speak. Conversation between you and God. Moses, King David, Elijah, all the prophets of the books of the prophets, all divine beings, man and divine beings. Just It only shows up in one place, and that's when... Jacob wrestled with a man and divine beings, and God spoke. He can speak through a man. He definitely did through Moses, and uh, he can with me, and he does. You can even spot it in some of these videos. You base, it's the words that are being spoken. Do those words come from Keith or from God? I said, let them figure that out. Go watch all the videos. God had Moses set a rule before the Israelites regarding the angel. He said to guard them on the way to the promised land. And he said, 
Pay heed to him and obey him. Do not defy him, for he will not pardon your offenses, since my name, God, Hashem, is in him. There are no orders, instructions, rules, or commandments between an angel and Moses or an angel and the Israelites. God said, pay heed, uh, heed him and do as all that I say. Heed him, but do what I say. He speaks to the angel of the Lord, too. That's the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. And he's most definitely a person. He's in this room right now. And so is the presence of God. They all come from Moses. Who? This is how you know Moses is a man divine being. Because the angel's within him. The angel never says anything. But Moses sure does. Who receives them from God. This angel is in Moses. Moses is a man with divine beings. Who is a messenger of God's laws. The divine beings are God and the angel of his presence. A man with divine beings is a host of the Lord's host. And there's a video on that. The descendant of King David, that's the twig of the shoe of the stump of Jesse, that the Spirit of God alights upon, is a host of the Lord's host. That, that's another phrase for a man and divine beings, a host of the Lord's host. One God, one angel, and one man, the prophets of God. Because if he speaks to you, you're a prophet. Prophet does not mean that you see the future. It's just you, you have discussions with God. Elijah is also a man in divine beings who is a messenger of the new covenant with sin forgiveness from Jeremiah and a teacher of righteousness. Unlike the prophets of the Hebrew Bible, he does not have to preach repent, repentance for everybody's forgiven, you know, for past sins. Now, he would teach it for uh, any sins that, that may occur thereafter. He teaches that the new covenant is an amendment and renewal of the first covenant. And the first covenant is, I will be your God, you will be my people, and you will follow all my commands, rules, and directions. Okay, the amendment of the first covenant from strict adherence, adherence by all of the Jewish people to being mindful of the teachings of God by those who heed and fear him and what it means to be in right standing with God. Mindful. That's a lot different than strict compliance. That's the amendment. It really, he just keeps repeating the first covenant. I'm your God, you are my people, and basically always have been. Always will be. You know, the Christians think God left the Jewish people for the Gentile with the sacrifice of his son. God making a sacrifice to human beings. Yeah, that's a switcheroo. Usually it's human beings like the Mayans offering up human sacrifices to the gods, their gods, hoping that will give them fertility, good crops, just anything they thought they needed. This makes his task of recounseling the family members one to the other with Judaism more likely to prosper. Oh yeah, we're going to add them. Okay, chapter 43. Moses and Joshua the attendant. You'll find this interesting. This has to do with the radiant face of Moses. Joshua the attendant was named Hoshi in the Exodus from the tribe of Ephraim. Hoshi, son of Nun, N-U-N. That's Numbers chapter 13, verse 8. And his name was changed to Joshua by Moses. 
Those were the names of the men who Moses sent to scout the land. But Moses changed the name of Hoshi, son of Nun, to Joshua. That's Numbers chapter 13, verse 16. On the first ascent of Moses to the mountain for 40 days and nights and returned with the Ten Commandments, his attendant Joshua was with him. After Moses descended and would enter the tent of mating, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one man speaks to another. That's where he just, he held a direct name. This is where I'm at while you're on those videos. This is what he'd be telling me. And he just said it himself. The Lord said it that. Said it. Is that even a word? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm engulfed in his power. Ezekiel called it the cords of his power. To me, I'm just enveloped in him, head to toe. And he can take me, <laughs> my eyes, everything. And he would then return to the camp. So Moses leaves and goes to the camp from the tent of Medi. But his attendant, Joshua, son of Nun, would not stir out of the tent. Joshua's name was Hoshi at this time. Joshua did not leave the tent of meeting where Moses would speak to God face to face. And this time, the face of Moses was not seen as radiant. Okay, so Moses is left. But Joshua's son of Nun is still in there. <laughs> Don't tell when Moses ascends the mountain the second time for 40 days and nights and returns with the new Ten Commandments, well, they're not new. God had to write them down. The skin of his face was radiant. And thereafter, when he enters and exits the tent of meeting, the skin on his face is radiant. And Hoshi is not mentioned again over Joshua. Oh, again, on the mountain or in the tent. Joshua the attendant, who is Hoshi the attendant, represents the person of the Spirit of the Holy God, who is alighted upon and dwells within and without Moses of the radiant face. The Spirit has lit upon and entered him, and God is in his spirit. Moses had become a host of the Lord's host, a man with divine beings. Chapter 44. Two more. 44 and 45. Moses and the 70 elders. God, there's no question Moses is a man of divine beings. This, this is... Well, God talked to him. God, yeah, once, once God speaks to you, I mean, that just means the Spirit lives upon you and God is in the Spirit. And He manipulates your mind. You, you don't hear His voice uh, with your ears. But in your mind, it's as though you're having a conversation with Him. His voice, my voice. My voice, the angel uh, of His presence voice. The Holy Spirit, who is a person. He's over here. And God pointed my head. The angel has no power. Nobody has power in the heavens except God. And he didn't share it with anybody. I've been trying to get some. He won't let me have any. <laughs> He's afraid I'd put him through the fire of fire. That would. Now, I couldn't do what he does to me. It's too mean. It's too brutal. Done phase him a bit. That was one of my first lessons. Or it's not the first lesson. Keith, this is God talking to me. Keith, your pain means nothing to me. And, I, and he hadn't really explained the fire or found it thoroughly to me. I had no idea what was coming. <laughs> and I just went, okay. I didn't even really think about it. <laughs> it's a hell of a thing to tell somebody. Moses and the seventy elders, God tells Moses, I will draw upon the spirit that is on you and put it upon them. They shall share the burden of the people with you 
and you shall not bear it alone. That's Numbers chapter 11, verse 17. And then God said, and then God drew upon the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they spoke in ecstasy, but did not continue. That's Numbers chapter 11, verse 25. And Moses said of the two elders who were acting the prophet in the camp, speaking in ecstasy, as the Spirit rested on them, would that all of the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord put his Spirit upon them. Numbers chapter 11, verse 25. The Spirit that was drawn from Moses and put upon the 70 elders is not the Spirit that was born in Moses and was Moses, the same Spirit that is in all men, what was drawn from Moses was the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is a person. The first person created by God, an angel. Angels are persons. The 70 elders had become hosts of the Lord's hosts because the Spirit lived upon them and God is in the Spirit. Apparently, He can do it with 70 people at one time. He won't do it for me. I keep telling Him, I'm a prophet like Moses. Why don't you go a light upon seventy synagogues and get get rabbis reading and teaching this book. Well, you got them to help Moses. That's a sound logical argument. And like my cousin Benny, then I. If you ever have you, if you haven't seen that show, go watch it. You'll see what I'm talking about. When each heard the angelic voice of the Spirit of God. More likely it was God. But it could have been him. He talks all the time. God doesn't speak that much. Except to torment me. Speak to them. Within them or without them. They became very excited. We're saying all kinds of different things. Depending on what the person of the Spirit of God was saying to them. The important part for Moses is that each of the 70 would now, in one accord, had the idea and thought that they would share the burden of the people with Moses. There is no account of God commanding the 70 elders to share the burden of the people with Moses. The Spirit of God told them to. Last one, chapter 45. This one's really interesting, but it's kind of hard to follow. The word of the Lord and Elijah. From 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 8 through 16. Elijah, oh, summarize. This is a summary of that. 8 through 16. Elijah, and he's got this in quotes, walked 40 days and 40 nights as far as the mountain of God at Horeb. Horeb. There he went into a cave, and there he spent the night. Then the word of the Lord came to him. He said to him, Why are you here, Elijah? Elijah answers, and the word of the Lord calls, Come out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. That's not God talking to Elijah, as you'll see when I read the rest of this. Uh -uh. That's the angel of God's presence, the Holy Spirit. He's the word of the Lord. I told you, he likes to do the, the talking. He talks all the time. And he talks, he had, that's too complicated. Don't go into that one. <laughs> we'll, we'll get that later. The Lord passed by. The word of the Lord's at the cave. Come stand at the front of the cave. The Lord passed by. And his power is revealed in a great destructive wind and earthquake and fire. But the Lord is not in them. And then a soft murmuring sound. A footnote says a still small voice. Elijah heard this, wrapped his mantle about his face. That's his outer garment, like a robe, I guess and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave where a voice addressed him. 
which is the Lord. Why are you here, Elijah? Elijah answers. It's the same question that came from the word of the Lord. Here's God doing it personally. Elijah answers, and the Lord instructs him to go to Damascus and anoint Hazel as king of Aram. Jehu is king of Israel, and Elisha is the prophet to succeed him. The word of the Lord came to and is with Elijah at the cave and says, Why are you here, Elijah? And come out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord passed by. His power is revealed. Earth, wind, and fire. Without his presence, he's not in them. And the Lord says, Why are you here, Elijah? The word of the Lord is at the cave with Elijah and speaks the same words that God speaks to Elijah away from the cave after he passed by and revealed his power at the cave. But he was not at the cave. The soft murmuring sounds, a still small voice, would be the same words from God that the word of the Lord has spoken based on one question that had already been asked twice before. Why are you here, Elijah? Which was, come out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And for the reason, that is what Elijah did after hearing the still small voice. Elijah ignored the word of the Lord. Remember, he has no power. The only power is God. The God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant. This is Elijah talking to God. Torn down your altars and put your prophets to the sword. How long men left and they are out to take my life. <laughs> the person of the spirit of the holy God speaks the words of the Lord to man. It's one person to another person. It is the word of the Lord. It's all over the Hebrew Bible. The word of the Lord came to me. Uh, it's really pointed out in Zechariah, which would be chapter... It's me and Rashi. Well, I'm pretty sure you can find it in 21. Yes. What it is? It's not Zechariah. Zechariah. Try uh, chapter 21. With, uh, that's commentary on Isaiah 53 by myself and Rashi. I found his commentary at uh, Shabbat.org. You know, God just died. I never heard of him. God said, go to Shabbat.org. I said, okay. See, it's not all just straight dictation. I got stuff from the Jewish Virtual Library. Uh, he was teaching me the scripture this whole time I've been in the fire of refinement, 16 years. <laughs> I guess I'm just hard to change. Even God's having a problem. <laughs> That's him laughing through me. <laughs> and shaking his head through me. God can speak to man at any time and from any place that he desires. He fills the universe like a great consciousness. And his presence does not have to be before a man or in the angel of his presence to be heard. His presence is his mind. He's not all one big brain. <laughs> That's what enters the temple along with the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit, which those two combined are the Holy Spirit, are the Shekinah, which I will be a part of. Because God says he's going to return to his temple suddenly. Well, for those who believe on a man and divine beings and that God resides within me, with his angel, I am going to be the first person to enter the eternal third temple. And everybody who believes in me will know God just fulfilled Malachi 3, his words. I'm returning to my temple. And I told God, well, it says suddenly. What if I run in? <laughs> I ran track. I set up the blocks and put on my spikes. 
does not have to be before a man or in the angel's presence to be heard. He has absolute power, absolute knowledge, and his and he is his creation. There's more on that other places. He is on. God created spirits and souls, which together form persons. Your soul's like the DNA of your person. And the, when combined with spirit, it is your person, not just your DNA. Persons of spirit, persons of angels, and persons of humans. Okay, next up will be chapter 46 of 50, so I'm getting close. This is Psalms 2 and the Day of the Lord. Now these are all, really, you know, I'm just freshening them up. They've become worn and torn from too much reposting. God has me repost them all the time. I think the initial ones got reposted 40 times. <laughs> and he wouldn't change it. Just, just this last uh, 30 days. This is the second, this is now the third time. Well, I did it the second time about three or four weeks ago. And he's already had me repost them almost ten times, and they're starting to have problems. So, uh, I guess we're just going to keep doing this every day to keep them fresh. They're good for about eight. And they're still okay. You know, there's some of them with problems. Some of them look perfectly fine. Okay, i got to take a break. Thank you for watching.